Good morning, my friends. Today, it's a very snowy day. A lot of snow. Very nice to see. It's a nice, pure sight. Uh, you know, I actually don't have my winter boots. Uh, they're not with me, so it's kind of annoying because I have to go to work later. So I'm going to have to walk and trudge through the snow. I wish I did have my uh, winter boots, but don't have them yet. So uh, might be a bit of a problem. So regardless, today I'm drinking some whole food supplements. Um, if you can see there, it's like a green liquid. Tastes uh, pretty good. I'm not going to say it tastes amazing, but it definitely tastes healthy. The thing about whole food supplements is that they're um, naturally derived. They're not synthetic vitamins and minerals. They're, uh, you know, real, made from plants, uh, from vegetables and fruits, and they're sort of concentrated, and then there's uh, they put some bacteria and other sort of good stuff in there. Um, they're a bit expensive though. This one I got, it's like a, you know, a relatively big jar. It was around $60. Uh, so it's a bit pricey. But if you think about what it is relative to other things that people waste their money on, um, you can have people that spend $100 in one night at a club uh, for something that's basically killing your body something that's like destroying your liver you're spending a hundred dollars to do that so you can have a bit of fun versus sixty dollars to you know live a healthy lifestyle for about two months or so so you know it's it's uh it's your choice really in the end um whether you want to think that as expensive or not it's kind of uh, irrelevant you know this is basically uh, a full meal right here so to speak and it's very good for you because um, I've been feeling very fatigued lately. I haven't been really eating as good. So I went to the pharmacy, bought this, drank it last night. And uh, within like a half hour, I immediately felt so much better, so much better. I had like a bad headache. I was just feeling sort of nauseous and queasy. And then, uh, you know, all of a sudden I started feeling a lot better. So um, if you're having uh, problems, you know, like brain fog, fatigue, just get some whole food supplements is probably the best thing you can do. No point in getting, uh, you know, very specific things. It's better to just go in a very broad direction and just get a bunch of stuff that's good for you, right? I'm not going to talk about that. There's not really much else to talk about with whole food supplements. I've been thinking about uh, the creative process. Uh, I've been reading a book. Uh, it's called Songwriters on Songwriting. I'm probably going to review it at some point. It's a really big book. It's like 700 pages. And he just interviews uh, pretty much most of the major songwriters of... Uh, it's predominantly like 60s, 70s, 80s era. Like all those like big folk singers like Bob Dylan and Joan Baez and Paul Simon and Leonard Cohen. Uh, you know, that kind of style of music is predominantly what he's focusing on. And uh, it's very interesting to see... Uh, the creative process of these people and uh, you know you can sort of see how they differ from other people um, there's a lot of things that are similar about them but there's also a lot of things that are sort of different everyone has their own different style which is what I think was uh, fascinating to me and uh, I think as an artist it's good to sort of see how other artists uh, develop their creative process because I don't think it's good to copy other people obviously but I think it's important to understand how they got to where they are and it maybe can inspire you to find out where you want to go what your style is of uh, developing a creative process one of the main things that I found very interesting is that I'd say probably 70% 70 75 percent of the artists in this book all sort of claim to have a spiritual connection in terms of where their music comes from where their lyrics come from they sort of say it comes from like out there so to speak there's still a few that obviously say it comes from within it comes from the individual they're atheists or whatever but a lot of them predominantly a lot of them uh, believe in this metaphysical spiritual uh, manifestation of uh, their lyrics and where they come from 
which I can understand. Um, I've been writing lyrics sort of lately because uh, I'm working on an album with lyrics. I'm not really going to talk much about that, but it's something that I'm taking my music to the next level, or at least trying to. Um, and I find when I'm writing my lyrics, I am, you know, it's it's a weird feeling that happens. It's sort of like this. Uh, I have like a subject or an idea in mind that I'm coming at it and then I don't really think about anything. I just sort of let it sort of fester in my mind and then it just sort of comes out randomly. Like I just like this line pops into my head and I write it down and then it, it works perfectly and I'm like, whoa, where did this come from? Um, and you know, we can say that it's uh, subconscious, subconscious or whatever. But I definitely do believe in uh, a higher power, and I think that's the case with a lot of uh, my music, uh, my instrumental music. Um, I've delved into a lot of areas where I'm uh, going to uh, different places. All the albums that are sort of uh, conceptually about foreign places, whether that's Ukraine or Brazil or London, I've never been to any of those places, but um, I tuned into what I thought or what I was like feeling of what the vibe would be from these countries, which is a very um, intricate thing to talk about. And people will, might say it's a lot of bullshit, but when talking to people from those countries, they say I definitely captured the vibe uh, very well, even though I've never actually been there, which is uh, ends up, they end up being quite surprised. I've had uh, several Ukrainians message me thinking that that I like the person who wrote this album must have been Ukrainian there's no way he wasn't and then they find out that I've never even actually been there I just have like a loosely ancestral connection to it based off of my heritage but I've never actually been there and the same thing uh, with Brazil um, uh, Brazil World Cup um, I've gotten the same thing and it's not something that I'm like proud of or take for granted or like yeah I'm the shit I'm just so smart it's just a, a matter of being able to tune into that vibe or that uh, environment so to speak uh, even though you're not actually physically there uh, which is part of the creative process for me um, which a lot of people might not uh, regard as being legitimate but I don't really care to be quite honest so having said that with the creative process I think you have to come at it from your own per from your own path, right? Um, it's not something that everyone's going to be good at, and I think that needs to be understood mainly that there's not everyone can be an artist, and I think that's very difficult for people to say, especially in this age of uh, you know there's so many artists out there, and uh, a lot of them aren't doing it for the right reasons. They're not doing it because that's what they're supposed to do, or they actually have like a gift of being an artist they're just sort of doing it because we've um, popularized the concept of being an artist so much that uh, people feel like that's a pathway that they can follow and um, you know there's many other things that you can do it's why I'm not uh, limiting myself to art even though that's basically one of the things that I'm probably best at doing there are many things that I could be doing which is why I'm learning about uh, finance the stock market I've even contemplated going to a trade school and just becoming a plumber uh, for what reason I don't know but I feel like if I'm gonna go to college it's probably a lot better to learn how to be a plumber than to go to art school if I'm gonna be honest it's going to art school I feel like um, won't benefit me in the slightest it might benefit other people but I feel like if you're already an artist inside you can sort of learn how to do art anywhere you want. Uh, you don't need school. It's definitely not going to help you get a job. It's not like this thing where it's like, oh, if you want to become accountant, you need a, a degree, you need a certificate. You don't need a certificate to be an artist, right? Uh, the reason why you'd go to art school is to sort of maybe learn the craft better in a rigid, disciplined place, which is like if you want to learn music, you take lessons. But We've seen countless times there's plenty of people who are self-taught. There's no reason why you can't do it yourself, is what I'm trying to say.
And I think that um, if you are an artist, there's definitely something that, well, at least from what I feel and from other, what other artists who are in that field, they sort of feel like it's something that you have to do. At least to me, it does. It doesn't feel like something that's like, I mean, I enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not something that I'm like, like, ooh, this is fun. Let me try this for a while. It's like this deeply ingrained part of me where I kind of hate it a little bit. It's a little bit of a curse where I have to do it. And uh, I have to take the, the bullshit of uh, mostly being criticized for it or for whatever my art is, which I'm totally fine with. I used to have a lot of problems with it a couple of years ago, and I've definitely uh, learned a lot from that aspect of it. And I think it's actually helped my art uh, develop further in terms of understanding myself and why I'm doing what I'm doing. But anyway, that's sort of what I'm talking about. Uh, and uh, I think that's, I'll just leave it at that. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day.